Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Ingrid Bergman and Joseph Cotton in Notorious. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. With the collapse of Nazi Germany after World War II, it was commonly believed that many of Hitler's more fanatic followers escaped to the Western Hemisphere to pursue their relentless plotting for world domination. Our play tonight, while purely fictional, is a sample of how these isolated groups may operate and how they may be brought to justice. It's Alfred Hitchcock's thrilling hit, Notorious produced by RKO, and stars its original leading lady, Ingrid Bergman, and Joseph Cotton, two of Hollywood's leading performers. Notorious might take place in any city, but actually we find ourselves in teeming and exotic Rio de Janeiro, one of the most exciting cities of the New World. I have an airmail letter from a friend of ours who made a flying visit to Rio, and reports while shopping in the fashionable Copacabana section, I purchased several exquisite examples of Brazilian lace. Imagine my surprise when I examined them to discover each piece labeled Wash Only in Lux. Fortunately, Lux flakes are available at almost every store in Rio. So were we to stay here longer, I'd have little trouble following such sensible advice. Well, for that message from Rio de Janeiro, all our thanks as we take you shortly to that colorful metropolis with Act One of Notorious, starring Ingrid Bergman as Alicia Huberman and Joseph Cotton in the role of Devlin. It's the height of the tourist season in Miami, Florida, and the passengers of a plane from New York have hastened to their hotels, all save one, a Mr. Devlin, who has gone directly to a building owned by the United States government. There, in an obscure and private office... And last Thursday, John Huberman, traitor, was sentenced to 20 years in the federal penitentiary. So I heard, Prescott. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Devlin, but I didn't drag you down here to pat me on the back. Huberman has a daughter here in Miami. Oh? Well, she was in no way involved with her father or with any of the other Nazi agents who worked against us during the war. I believe she can be of great help to us now. That's what I want you to find out. You've approached her? Well, not yet, but we know a great deal about her. Oh, here's her photograph. Alicia Huberman. Hmm. Attractive. Very. And something of a problem. Miss Huberman is not what our mothers would have called a nice girl. Out every night, drinks a lot, gets arrested once a week for reckless driving. Oh. But whatever she may be, we think she's still a good American. I, uh, I've made arrangements for you to meet her tomorrow night. That should be pleasant. Yes. Tomorrow night, Alicia Huberman is throwing a party. If it's her customary party, it'll be loud, long, and alcoholic. On Sunday, she plans to leave on a cruise with friends. I want you to find out if she'll go to work for us instead in South America. South America? Yes, Rio de Janeiro. Well, here's the whole file on Miss Huberman. Look it over and then start asking questions. Do this often, Miss Huberman? Leave your party, go for rides at two in the morning? Oh, I thought you invited me to take a ride. Didn't, didn't think you'd accept. Oh. Yeah, oh. Don't you think I'd better drive? No. No, I thought that was understood. Or do you think I'm drunk? Oh, huh? no, no, no. You know something, Mr. Uh, well, Devlin. Devlin, Devlin. How do you get to my party? <laughs> the Hopkins, remember? No. Oh, no, I don't remember. Anyway, you were saying... Anyway, I like you. You're quite a boy, aren't you? Oh, huh? terrific. How am I doing? 80 miles an hour. Oh, you can stop grinning. I don't like gentlemen who grin at me. <laughs> I was really grinning at the man in the mirror. What mirror? I mean, what man? A man on a motorcycle. We're being pursued. Cops. Oh, they make me sick. Well, I'm glad you're stopping. I think this cop wants to talk oh. to you. Oh, am I drunk? If I am, I go to jail. Oh, my whole family in jail. Who cares? 
having a time for yourself, aren't you? Well, people like you ought to be in bed. And drinking, huh? Well, just a minute, officer. No arguments, mister. Yeah. What do I want your license for? She was at the wheel. This isn't a driver's license. Huh? Oh. Sorry. Okay. Sure you can handle her? I think so. Well, you ought to know. Night. Night. Oh, wait. That, that, that cop, he saluted you. Did he? Why, you, you double-crossing. You're a cop yourself. Uh, we'll argue about that later. Right now, I'm taking oh, you home. Get out of my now, car. Now, look. You're not taking me move anyway. Move over. I'll get, out of, get your hands off me, crashing yeah. my body. You're a federal cop, aren't you? I aren't said you? move over. Get out. Leave me alone. You're trying to get something on you me. You better calm down. Get out. Get out. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Miss Huberman. First time this week I've socked a lady. Morning, Alicia. Feeling better? Oh, what do you care how I feel? You cop. <laughs> it's eight o'clock. Oh. Your other guest left about three hours ago. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, want a refill for that ice bag? Say, so what's all this about? What's your angle? What angle? Why did you crash my party? Hmm? Wanted to meet you. Oh, so you could frame me? No, I've got a job for you. Mm, don't tell me. There's only one job that you coppers would want me for, but I'm I'm not a stool pigeon, Mr. Devlin. <laughs> my department has authorized me to offer you a job in Brazil. Oh, go away. Some go of the away. German gentry whom your father once worked for are in Rio now, busy as little bees. I'm not interested. We're working with the Brazilian government to smoke them out. My chief thinks that the daughter of a... Of a traitor. Well... Mm -hmm. He thinks you could be valuable to us and you could make up a little of your daddy's peculiarities. Why should I? Patriotism. Patriotism. Uh, 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 waving the flag in one hand and picking pockets with the other. That's your patriotism and you can have it. What will you have? My own life. Go away and leave me alone. Your own life? What's that? Good times and laughs with people I like. No underhanded cops who want to set me up in a shooting gallery. People of my own kind who treat me right and like me and understand. I like Mr. Hopkins. What about Mr. Hopkins? Just phoned. Had to remind you, his yacht sails at noon. They're all calling for you at 11. Oh, then why don't you get out of here? The plan to Rio leaves tomorrow morning. Then you must drop me a postcard, Mr. Devlin. Rio must be beautiful this time. We're coming into Rio, Miss Huberman. Well? Well, what? When are you going to ask me why I changed my mind? Why, I took a plane instead of a yacht. Well, you're here, aren't you? As soon as we land, we'll look up Mr. Prescott. Who is Mr. Prescott? Our boss. Mm -hmm. Miss Huberman, just now when I was talking to the pilot... I told you we were coming into Rio. He told me something else. A message came in over the radio. Your father. What about my father? He... He committed suicide this morning in his cell. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't know why I should care, but, but I do. When I found out about my father a few years ago, who he was, what he was doing, everything went to pot. I didn't care what happened to me, but, but now I suddenly remember how nice he, he once was, how nice we both once were. Anything I can do? No. No. It's a very curious feeling. As if something had happened to me, not to him. You see, I don't have to hate my father anymore. Or myself. Well, Dave, how do you like the apartment Mr. Prescott found for me? It's very attractive. Will I be staying here? I wish I could tell you. I don't know. Well, will you know? Soon, I think. Huh? Prescott's meeting now with the Brazilian intelligence. Oh, so you fixed dinner, huh? Mm-hmm. Have time for another drink? Oh, thanks, I've had enough. Oh. Well, aren't you impressed? I'm practically on the wagon. Oh, it's a phase. You don't think a woman can change? Sure. Change is fun for a while. For a while. You've been sober for ten oh. days now, and as far as I know, you've made no new conquests. Well, that's something, isn't it? Mm. Ten days. Practically whitewash. What? Is... What a rat you are. I'm very happy, Dev. Why won't you let me be happy? Nobody's stopping you. Why don't you give that copper's brain of yours a rest? Every time you look at me, it tells you, no, 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 stay away from her. It says she's no good. She never will be. Alicia. Go on, Dev. Go on. You can take my hand. I won't blackmail you for it afterwards. Thanks. You are afraid. 
Afraid you're falling in love with me? That wouldn't be hard to do. Oh, no, no, no. Careful, Debbie, careful. Huh. You enjoy making fun of me, don't you? No. I'm making fun of myself. I'm pretending I'm a very nice, unspoiled child whose heart is full of daisies and buttercups. It's a nice daydream. Then what? I think I will have another drink. Yeah. Thought you'd get around to it. Why won't you believe me in me, death? Just a little. Why won't you? How do you know I don't? I know because you're sore. You've fallen for me and you don't like it, no. People will laugh at you. Poor dad. Poor dad. In love with a no good gal, huh? It must be awful. Come here. Hey. Don't hey. say anything, Dad. Just kiss me. Don't say anything. Devlin, something wrong? Wrong? No, no, no. Nothing's wrong, Prescott. I, uh, I'm sorry I had to send for you. I'm sorry I interrupted your date with Miss Huberman. Yeah. Well, here's the setup. Okayed by Brazil Intelligence. The leader of the German agents here in Rio is a man named Alex Sebastian. Well, if we know who he is, why can't we pick him up? Oh, sure, sure, we could pick him up. And the next day, someone else takes his place, and whatever it is they're working on continues. Now, their headquarters is Sebastian's home. We need somebody to get inside that house. Somebody in Sebastian's confidence. In other words, Alicia Huberman. Right. You said you were having dinner with her when I called. I'll go back to her apartment then and tell her. She's good at making friends with gentlemen, hey, so... If that's meant to be funny, what I... the devil's eating you? I... I don't know if she'll do it. You haven't even discussed it. No, but... I don't think she's that type of woman. She, she's never been trained for that kind of work. They'll, they'll see through her. Miss Huberman was chosen for two reasons. One, her father was a Nazi agent. Two, Sebastian once knew her in Washington. Sebastian knew her? Yes, he was in love with her. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, you know it now. You've got to get Miss Huberman inside his house and find out what's going on there. How, uh, how does she meet him? Well, I think the riding club would be best. Sebastian rides every morning. The rest is up to you and Miss Huberman. You've hardly said a word, Deb. My cooking isn't that bad. It's a little well done, maybe, but still. I'm sorry I was so late getting back. Uh, Prescott, uh, I believe. Uh, What's the matter, Deb? Trouble? In a way. All this secrecy is going to ruin my little dinner. Come on, Hanson. What is darkening your brow? Uh, later. No, 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 now. Look, I'll make it easy for you. The time has come when you must tell me that you have a wife and two adorable children, and this madness between us can go on no longer. But you've heard that line often enough. Oh, that wasn't fair, Dad. Then skip it. You remember a man named Sebastian? Alex Sebastian? Yes. He was one of my father's friends. I had quite a crush on you. Oh, I wasn't very responsive. Well, he's in town. Part of the combine that built up the German war machine. He ho hopes to keep on going. Something big? All the earmarks. We'll have to contact him. Go on. Let's have all of it. We're meeting him tomorrow morning, and you're going to go to work on him. Mata Haring. She makes love for the secret papers? Prescott's orders? Yes. Did you say anything? Well, I mean that maybe I wasn't the right girl for such shenanigans. No. I figured that was up to you if... if you cared to back out. Mm -hmm. I suppose you told him that Alicia Huberman will have this Sebastian eating out of her hand in a couple of weeks. She's so good at that. Always I was. didn't say anything. Not a word? For the little lovesick lady who cooked dinner for you? I told you that's the assignment. Oh, don't get cross, Deb. I'm only fishing for a little bird call from my... my dream man. One little remark such as, uh, how dare you suggest that Alicia Huberman, don't you, Miss Huberman, be submitted to so that's ugly a fate? That's not funny either. Oh, darling. What you didn't tell Prescott, tell me. That you believe I'm nice. And that I love you and that I'll never change back. I'm waiting for your answer. What a little pal you are. Never believing in not a word of faith. Just down the drain with Alicia. That's where she belongs. Oh, death. Oh, pour me a drink and tell me what I do for Uncle Sam. We'll meet Sebastian on the bridal path. When he questions you about me, I'm with Pan American Airways, public relations. Anything else? I happen to meet you on the plane from Miami. The less the tale, the better. That's all. That's all. My beautiful dinner. Cold. 
cold as ice. <laughs> I can't get over it, Alicia. Meeting you this morning, <laughs> all places a bridal path in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, how do you know I wasn't looking for you, Alex? Oh, if I could only believe that. <laughs> you should. Didn't I prevail upon you to take me to dinner? Ah, uh -huh. prevail. <laughs> you look very well, Alex. After four years here, dullness and disintegration. You look younger than you did in Washington. Entirely due to your presence, Alicia. You always affected me like a tonic. Who are you looking at, my dear? That man who just came in. Do you know him? I, I don't think I do. His name is Prescott. Espionage. Oh. The American embassy is loaded with them. Really? They bothered you since you came here? No, 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 not yet. That's one reason I left Miami, to get away from their snow queen. I wondered why you left your father. He insisted, Alex. He was so unselfish. He kept begging me to leave. I had no idea he, he was going to die. Many have died, Alicia. We mustn't let our spirit die with them. Perhaps I can help you forget. Oh, Alex. There's, there's someone else, of course. Is there? Who, Alicia? That uh, Mr. Devlin who is with you this morning? <laughs> Mr. Devlin doesn't interest me in the least. I, I've just been so lonely. I could have gone riding this morning with Peter Rabbit. <laughs> you will let me help your loneliness? Oh, you're very sweet to forget what a, what a brat I was once. Well, then I'll test your repentance immediately. Will you have dinner with me again tomorrow night? My mother's giving a little party at home. Oh, Alex, how nice. Are you sure you're, she won't mind an extra guest? Oh, an old friend is never an extra guest. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. You look very beautiful, Miss Huberman. Don't you agree, Devlin? Sebastian is sending his car for Miss Huberman. I suggest we get out of her apartment. Oh, there's time. Now, part of your job tonight, Miss Huberman, will be to get the names of all the men you see in Sebastian's house. You mean the Germans? That won't be difficult. Don't underestimate them. They're a very keen and desperate bunch. Anything else? No, nothing. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, uh, unless you have something urgent to report, we'd better avoid each other for the next few days, just in case Sebastian's crowd wants to check on you after tonight. Very well. And don't meet here when you do. What about the racetrack, Devlin? The racetrack's fine. We can arrange a date by phone. Night, at least. Miss Huberman, well, well, good afternoon. Mr. Devlin, how nice seeing you again. Uh, picking any winners? You alone? No, Alex and his mother. Where? A box in the clubhouse. I'm sure they can't see us. Play it safe and keep smiling. Yes. Well? I've seen Alex twice since the dinner at his house. Who was there? His mother, her servant named Joseph, hmm. and four other men, William Rosner, Eric Matisse, Emil Hupke, and Professor Anderson. Go on. Have you ever heard of Anderson? No. He, he's some kind of scientist, medium height, gentle face, uh, 60 years old, uh -huh. gray hair, deep crease on his forehead. You writing this down? Oh, I'm just trying to check these horses on my program. Uh, look happy, will you? What about him? Who heard of him? No. He made quite a scene at the dinner about a bottle of wine. A bottle of wine? Yes, it was on the buffet. Hoopka became quite excited. He said it should be removed at once. Well, what happened? They just ignored him and kept this conversation going. Hoopka seemed quite flustered, apologetic. I, I couldn't figure it out. Did they serve the wine? No, not that particular bottle. Do you think it had any significance? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what brand was it? All I saw of the label was vintage 1939, 1934. Has Hoopka pulled anything since? I haven't seen him since. Well, what else? Just a minor item you may want for the record. Well? You can add Sebastian's name to my list of playmates. Oh, pretty fast work. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? His mother suspects me. What? Oh, don't worry. She believes I'm after her son's money. You betting on this race, Mr. Devlin? They're about to start. No. Alex says number 10 is sure to oh, win. I can't help recalling some of your remarks about being a new woman daisies and buttercups, wasn't it? What are you angry about? You knew very well what I was doing. Did I? You could have stopped me with one word. No, you threw me at I it. I threw it, you know. Now keep your eyes on the race. Use your binoculars. Didn't you tell me to go ahead? A man doesn't tell a woman what to do. A woman tells herself. You almost had me believing in that little hokey-pokey miracle of yours that a woman like you could change her spot. You and that's why I didn't try to stop you. The answer had to come from you. I see some kind of love. That's right. You never believed in me anyway, so what's the difference? Yeah. That goes you number 10. What if I had believed in you? What if I had figured she could never go through with it? She's been made over by love. 
the only ones that said that you loved me. Uh, listen, you chalked up another boyfriend. That's all. No harm done. I hate you. No occasion to. You're doing fine work. I'll see that they're told. Who? Oh. We're having a meeting tomorrow with Barbosa, Brazilian intelligence. In case you're interested, number 10 is winning the race. Yeah, Sebastian knows how to pick them. That's all you've got to say to Oh, me. dry your eyes, baby. It's out of character. And be quick about it. Here comes Dreamboat. Oh, no. Ah, Mr. Devlin. Sebastian. Oh, Alex. Oh, what a wonderful race. Alicia tells me you had a bet on that number 10. Sorry I didn't meet you early, Alicia. Well, I'll see you soon, I hope. Yes. What's the matter, Alex? You're not at all excited about the race? I didn't see the race. I was watching you and Mr. Devlin. You had an appointment to meet him here? Oh, don't be absurd. I just happened to bump into him. You didn't appear anxious to get away. So... I watched you. I thought maybe you were in love with him. Alex, really, I detest him. I'd like to be convinced. Would you maybe care to convince me, Alicia? You know Mr. Devlin, Senor Barbosa? No. Mr. Devlin. And this is Mr. Beardsley, also of our office. Senor Barbosa, Brazilian intelligence. Sit down, gentlemen. Well? Our little theatrical plan is working, Senor. Good. Thanks to Miss Huberman, we know that Otto Rensler is working here in Rio. He was one of Hitler's scientific wizards, now known as Professor Anderson. Anderson? And that body found in the surf two days ago. Yes, identify. His description fits Emil Hufka. One of the boys who must have said the right thing at the wrong time. I'd still like to know about that wine bottle. Excuse me, senor. Uh, yes? Miss Huberman has seen Mr. Prescott or Mr. Devlin. Here? Yes, sir. Show her in. I don't like this, her coming here. Yeah, she's had me worried for some time. A woman of that sort. What sort is that, Mr. Beardsley? Oh, I don't think any of us have any illusions about Miss Huberman, have we, Devlin? Not the slightest. Miss Huberman is first, last, and always not a lady. She may be risking her life, but when it comes to being a lady, she doesn't hold a candle to your wife, sir, sitting in Washington playing bridge with three other ladies of great and impeachable honor. Take it easy, Dev. Sorry. Well, I think those remarks about my wife are uncalled for. Go on, I apologize. Oh, come in, Miss Huberman. Mr. Beardsley, Senor Barbosa. How do you do? Senorita, you have the esteem of my government, but we're worried about your vesting this office. I promise not to break the rules again, but I need advice. I couldn't find Mr. Something Devlin. happened? Yes. Mr. Sebastian has asked me to marry him. Well, well. I'm to give him my answer at lunch. I didn't know what the department might think about such a move. You're willing to go that far for us, Monsieur Moon? Yes. If you wish. Devlin, may I ask what inspired Sebastian to go this far? He's in love with me. And he thinks you're in love with him. Yes, that's what he thinks. Gentlemen, it is the cream of the jest. Then, then it is all right. Oh, it's an ideal marriage. For us. Yes, everything seems to be arranged perfectly. I don't think you need me here any longer, Prescott. Oh, no, but we... Uh... Oh, excuse me, then. Uh... Oh, uh, congratulations, Alicia. Thank you, Beth. I knew you'd be impressed. In a moment, we will return with Act Two of Notorious. Meanwhile, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. I looked for you last Monday evening, Libby, at the metro golden Mayor premiere of Cass Timberland. Oh, I was there, Mr. Keeley, but I don't wonder you didn't see me in those crowds. It certainly was an exciting opening. It looked as if practically every star in Hollywood turned out to see the screen version of Sinclair Lewis's powerful novel. You know, it seemed just as dramatic the second time, even though I'd seen a preview at the studio. Spencer Tracy is marvelous in the title role. With Lana Turner for romantic interest, well, it just couldn't miss. The triangular love story is always a great theme. Especially when Zachary Scott is the rival for Lana Turner's love. A perfect cast and a gripping play like that is every producer's dream. <laughs> and every feminine moviegoer will envy Lana Turner when, as Ginny in Cast Timberlane, she goes on a shopping spree in New York. She buys herself an expensive glamour wardrobe including some wonderfully wispy nylon stockings. I said to myself, if John Kennedy here had been technical advisor, he would have included a shot of her buying Lux Flakes to take care of them. Well, Libby, it's highly improbable, or highly probable that Sinclair Lewis' heroine did. Because smart women everywhere know that Lux makes stockings last long. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I know that the studio kept those stockings lovely as new for retakes by washing them with Lux Flakes after every wearing. A wise procedure for women everywhere. Because tests show that stockings actually last twice as long. 
when they're washed with Lux. It was really surprising how quickly identical stockings, washed with a strong soap or rubbed with cake soap, went into runs. The Lux ones kept going twice as long, and the colors looked so much fresher, too. That extra wear is just like getting an extra pair of stockings every time you buy a pair. That's why Lux Flakes are America's favorite stocking care. We return you now to William Keeley. Continuing with Act Two of Notorious, starring Ingrid Bergman as Alicia and Joseph Cotton as Devlin. A few hours have passed. Elated by Alicia's consent to marry him, Alex Sebastian has just brought the news to his mother. Marry her. What are you, a moonstruck boy? Of course she is beautiful, but... But what? But many things. Her sympathies, for instance. Where do they lie? I've told you a dozen times, Mother. Alicia does not concern herself with politics. At her father's trial, why did she not testify on his behalf? Because her father insisted she be kept clear of it. So she said. Mother, are you accusing Alicia of lying? I accuse only you. Thinking of marriage at a time like this. Risking everything we have worked for, suffered for. Oh, Alicia knows nothing. She will know nothing. But I know. Know what? That she came here for one purpose. To capture the rich Alex Sebastian for her husband. Ah. And she has succeeded. Oh, you're being absurd. We will discuss it more fully tonight. We will not discuss it tonight. You're jealous, just as you've always been jealous of any woman I've been interested in. Now, Alicia and I shall be married next week. Be private. We shall both be pleased to have you present, if you wish. Come in, Joseph. Did you want something? Only to tell you how happy I am that you and Mr. Sebastian are home again. The house needs you, madame. Thank you. You had a pleasant wedding trip? Very. Oh, as long as you're here, Joseph, my clothes. I'd like all my dresses put out on the bed, please. I have aired all the closets, madame. Mm, but there isn't enough closet space in this bedroom. Isn't there a storeroom down the hall? Uh, yes, madame. But the door, it is locked. Then bring me the key, please. Mr. Sebastian's mother, madame, she has all the house keys. Oh. Do you know where Mr. Sebastian is? I believe he is having a business meeting in his study. Business meeting? Professor Anderson, madame. Yes. And the other gentleman. What do you say, Professor? That I have news for you, my friends. My work is done. Ah, oh, you've been successful. Yes, Alex, yes. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, Alicia, my dear. Come in. Oh, I didn't know you were busy, Alex. Some of the closets seem to have been locked. Could you give me the keys? The keys? You mean my mother hasn't given... Yes, I'll get them for you at once. Excuse me, gentlemen. Shall I go with you, Alex? No, if you'll just wait in your room, Alicia. Mother! Mother, where are you? Are you sure this is all right, Dad? Meeting you like this in a public park? Oh, stop worrying. You're talking about keys. Yes. His mother keeps them. He has all but one, the key to the wine cellar. Alex keeps that one himself. Joseph told me. Then get it from him. Get it? How? Don't you live near him? What do I look for in the wine cellar? Look for a bottle of wine like, like that one that unnerved the late Mr. Hooker, vintage 1934. All wine bottle, bottles look alike to me. I'm no master mine. You're doing all right. It's no fun, Bill. Uh, too late for that now, isn't it? Look. Why don't you persuade your husband to throw a large shindig and introduce his bride to Rio society next week, say? Why? Invite me and I'll try to find out about that wine cellar. I don't think my husband's interested in entertaining. Don't underestimate your charms, Mrs. Sebastian. You can promote a party. It won't be easy getting you there. He thinks you're in love with me. Then, uh, tell him that you think if you invited me and I could see how happily married you are, the horrid passion I have for you might diminish. Uh... I'll try. Good. And get the key. I'll be looking forward to seeing you, Mr. Depp. It's always a pleasure meeting you, madame. Good day. Still shaving, Alex? Do hurry, dear. Our guests will be arriving soon. Don't tell me your dress. Of course. Oh, let me let me look at you. Well, oh, Alicia, <laughs> like a dream, a dream. <laughs> now, please hurry, dear. Oh, don't go. Stay there and talk. 
Oh, what about? Oh, your dressing table. What's wrong with my dressing table? You mean to say you carry all these things around in your pockets? <laughs> oh, what thing? Oh, talk about a woman's purse. Look at this litter. Papers and letters, two wallets, cigarette case, cigarette holder, keys. <laughs> keys. You know, you know, my dear, I'm really surprised that Mr. Devlin's coming tonight. The key to the wine cellar. Alicia. Y- yes, dear. You're suddenly silent. Don't worry. I don't blame anyone for falling in love with you. Oh, it's not that I don't trust you, darling, but when you're in love at my age... Uh... <sighs> Alicia, is anything wrong? Wrong? Oh, my word, you look so serious. Oh, I'm a fool. I should never have mentioned Devlin. Forgive me, darling. Of course. Well? What? What do you want? Hold your hand, dear. Mayn't oh. I kiss your hand? Oh, Alicia, not that clenched <laughs> up little fist. Are you hiding oh, something Alex, in your hand? Alex, doesn't it occur to you that, that I might like to kiss you too? Oh, Alicia. Alicia. Good evening, Mr. Sebastian. Mr. Devlin, I'm glad to see you. It's kind of your bride to invite me. Well, we both invited you, Mr. Devlin. Oh, I... Excuse me, Alicia. I must introduce Madame Astrid. The key? Yeah, in my hand. Good. Now, this won't be easy. He's quite sensitive about you. He's going to be watching us like a hawk. How's the liquor supply up here? What do you mean? I mean, if it should run out, he'd go down to the cellar for more, wouldn't oh, he? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That's quite a point. Then you must work fast. I can't. I'm supposed to be a guest here. I'll slip away later on. You better go to your friends. I'll find you. It's a nice party, isn't it, Alicia? It's a wonderful party. You handled things perfectly. I'm very proud. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. What, what happened to Mr. Devlin? I haven't seen him for an hour. Oh, he's around, I imagine, trying to drown his sorrows. Oh? Excuse me, dear. I think I'll ask the office to play something lively, or we've had nothing but waltzes all evening. This is the pantry, huh? Yes. Anyone see you come in here? No, I don't think so. And uh, is this the door to the wine cellar? Yes, for heaven's sake, Deb, hurry. Oh, lots of time. I- I'll be out in the garden. There's a door from the wine cellar that leads to the garden. When you get downstairs, open it. You'll be there? Yes, I'll be there in case anything happens. Now, hurry. some kind of metal ore. I've got to try to clean this up. I'll push the glass under the bottom shelf. What what, what about the sand? I'm taking some of it for a sample. It's a little weird, isn't it? Here. Here, I'll put this bottle in place of the one you broke. It has the same label. Stop shaking. Well, I have a feeling we're so slow. Shh. Someone's come. No, relax. Look, there is. Listen. Yeah, get out of here. No, 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 not upstairs. The door to the garden. But he's coming that way. Keep quiet. It's Alex. He sees us. Keep looking at me. No. I'm going to kiss you. No, no, he'll only think that... That's what I want him to think. Dad. Oh, Dad. It's almost as if we meant it, wasn't it? Now, push me away. I'm sorry to intrude on this tender scene. Alex, Alex, I... I couldn't help it. He's been drinking. Why are you out here? Or did he carry you off? Oh, Alex. You love him. Oh, no, no, I don't. Please go, Dad, please. For what it's worth as an apology, Mr. Sebastian, your wife is telling the truth. I knew her before you, loved her before you, but wasn't as lucky as you. Sorry, Alicia. He kissed you. Oh, Alex, don't I? I came out here because he threatened to make a scene unless I'd seen yes, him alone. He kissed you. But I couldn't stop him. I tried. All right, all right. We'll talk about it later. We have guests inside. You're not coming with me? I came to get more wine. No, I, I'd better go back with you. People... People may wonder. Alicia, darling, it's late. I thought you went upstairs long ago. I've been helping Joseph clean up. Besides, you you said you wanted to see me. Oh, uh, uh, Devlin. Yes. Oh, I acted like a stupid schoolboy. 
Once again, I'm ashamed of myself. You do believe me? Oh, Alicia, of course. Thank you. Aren't you coming up there? No, not for a while. Professor Anderson's still in the study. Sleep well, Alicia. Good night, Alex. Thanks for being so nice. <laughs> I need your help. Something is wrong. It's a great deal. Alicia. I have expected it. I knew it. I knew. Who is it? Mr. Devlin? No, no. It's much more serious than that. I am married to an American agent. Alicia. Late last night after she went to bed, Joseph came to me. There were some bottles to be returned to the cellar. He asked me for the key. This key. It was gone. Gone? Where was it? Ten minutes ago when I woke up, it was back on my keychain. She'd been down there, the wine cellar. It is easy to see now. I knew long ago, but I did not see. They picked her up because of her father. Oh, I must have been insane to behave like an idiot, to believe in her. Oh, stop wallowing in your memory. I'm done, Mother. I'm finished. They'll find out. Anderson, Eric, Martise, Rosner. Well, look what they did to Hoopka. He did next to nothing, and I betrayed them. I do the same thing myself. Kill the fool who betrayed them. There is no need for them to find out. Oh, they're too clever. Who would imagine that you are married to an American agent? No. For a while, at least, the enormity of your stupidity is your protection. But Alicia, I'll take care of her myself. No, not that way. I stood looking at her just now as she lay sleeping in there. Be so easy. You are almost as impetuous as you were before your wedding. You barred me from that episode. Let me arrange this one. No one else must know what she is. There must be no suspicion... She must be allowed to move about freely. But she will be on a leash. Then, then, in time, it will happen. But it must happen slowly. She will become ill. Remain ill for a time. Until one day... We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Our stars will return with Act Three of Notorious in a moment. Our guest tonight is that rarity in movie town, a native Californian, long blue-eyed Jacqueline White. I understand you've been interested in a movie career since childhood, Jacqueline. That's right, Mr. Keeley. And now you've seen your dream come true with many successful picture roles. Well, I was especially happy with my part in RKO's new picture, Night Song. You gave a very fine performance, Jacqueline, as Merle Oberon's best friend. She was wonderful in her role, Mr. Keeley. It's an inspiring performance. And Dana Andrews at his best in those tender, sensitive love scenes with Merle. Dana told me he really enjoyed playing the part of a composer because he loves music so. There's plenty of that in Night Song, and for every taste. I loved every minute we were working. But I did have a twinge of envy when I saw those gorgeous clothes designed for Merle Oberon. One negligee in particular. It was very simply made, but the softest, most beautiful satin imaginable... Merle told me she was going to have it copied for her own wardrobe. And uh, John Kennedy might be interested in something else she said about it. Something about Lux? Oh, yes. Because she didn't think it would wash until the studio luxed it, and it came out lovely. Was she impressed? RKO, just like other leading Hollywood studios, insists on Lux care for all nice washables. So what could be safer for a star's own lovely things? Or for any girl's? And here's another interesting point. Did you know that with Lux Care, you can have three times as many pretty underthings? Well, that's for me, Mr. Kennedy. But how do you figure it? Well, underthings washed the Lux way stay lovely three times as long. Tests prove that. Identical slips and nighties washed the wrong way soon look faded and drab. So, instead of replacing slips often because they're old looking, you can buy extra new ones. Have three times as many. And as you say, Jacqueline, that's something any girl would like. Thank you for coming tonight, Miss White. Back now to our producer, William Keeley. 
Be sure to join us after our final curtain for a brief chat with tonight's stars. Here's the third act of Notorious, starring Ingrid Bergman as Alicia and Joseph Cotton as Devlin. The passing days have brought to Alicia not the slightest inkling that her husband and his mother are well aware of her real purpose in the Sebastian residence. Now, in response to a phone call from Prescott, Alicia meets Devlin in a quiet corner of a public park. I'm sorry I couldn't make it on time, Dad. Gets a bit lonely squatting on a park bench all day. I was ill. Oh, don't let it alarm you. I'm all right now. Prescott said you'd have a message for me. I want you to know you can be proud of yourself. That sample of sand I got shows uranium ore. Your job from now on is to help us find out where the ore is coming from. Anything else? Putting some new men on the case, you may soon have a new contact. You're leaving? Possibly. Paris may be more interesting. Yes. Yes, there really isn't very much for a brainy fellow like you to do here anymore. That's right. I'm going stale, I... Say, you don't look so hot. <laughs> well, this fresh air will help me. Think to my son? Oh, don't be so charitable, Dad. It could be a hangover, you know. Back to the bottle again, huh? It lightens my chores. Big party? Oh, just a family circle. Must have been quite an evening. Well, go on, have fun. There's no reason why you shouldn't. No. Well, goodbye, Dad. You mean goodbye? Just goodbye. Goodbye, fresh air isn't as good for hangovers, I thought. Sit down, you're still tight. No, I, I don't want to. Where are you going? Home, back home. Alex is coming home early. I'd better be there. Alex, the drug. You were able to get some more. Yes, I've got it. Mother, you're sure? You're sure she doesn't suspect? She knows she is ill. That is all. She is going to feel a little worse after dinner. As a matter of fact, right after she drinks her coffee. Well, we might all go into the living room. Joseph will bring our coffee in there. Alicia. Yes, Professor. My dear, you uh, you don't look at all well. Alice, what, uh, what's wrong with her? We, we, we just don't know. <laughs> it's those highballs I sneak on the side. Balls? Oh, darling, don't <laughs> joke about it. Why, she hasn't had so much as a sherry all week. Well, hadn't you better see the doctor, Alicia? I never go near doctors. They always want to cart you off to a hospital. <laughs> Perhaps you belong in a hospital. When did all this start? Oh, no, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe after the party, I... still I think a sea trip would be much better for you, darling, than doctors and hospitals. Oh, no, 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 I'll be all right. What about the mountains? Altitude for share. I'm going next week. Oh, you're leaving us, Professor. I'm sorry, I'll miss you. Well, you could come with me. The Amores Mountains are beautiful, covered with flowers. What Alicia needs is rest, not mountain climbing. I've heard about the Amores and those, those little native towns. Are you going to Leopoldina? No, no, no. I am going to Santa Maria. Well... Here's our coffee. Just leave it, Joseph. I'll serve. Yes, madam. <laughs> I will not allow you to wait on me, madam. I can serve myself. No, uh, that is not your cup. My cup? No, that, that's Alicia's cup. Well, but I... uh, it's, it's not quite full, you notice. <laughs> oh, you're giving our little secret away, Professor. Oh. Yes, sweet. We have a confession. You know how Alicia loves coffee, Professor. Alex and I think she has been taking too much. We cheat a little. Here you are, dear. Thank you. Ah. Is it, uh, is it hot enough? It's fine, Alex. Uh, perhaps Alex is right, Alicia. About rest. When you are young, rest is the best, Doctor. Uh, oh, excuse me, Alicia. I want to go to bed, I think. Oh, the pain again, darling. I'm sorry to complain all the time. May I take you to your room? Oh, please forgive me. I'll be all right. Alex, I, I'm worried about her. We wanted to call a doctor yesterday. But she simply... Mr. Wo Sebastian! Mr. Sebastian! Yes? What is it, Joseph? Mr. Sebastian! She collapsed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Go away. No. It's all right, Alicia. No. It's all right. You'll feel better soon. Oh, I... You're here in your own bed. I don't want... Please let me call the hospital. Professor, uh... you're already late for your meeting with Eric Matisse. Oh. Yes, I... I must go, I suppose. Mm. Uh, good night. I'll go to the door. Joseph. Yes, madam? She must have absolute quiet. Disconnect the I, telephone. No, no. Take it out of the room, Joseph. No. Oh, 
five days now, Prescott. Alicia hasn't been near the park for five days. Uh, she was to check with one of us at least every other day. Yeah. That must be quite a binge she's on. No. No, I don't think so. Well, you were the one who said she was drinking. Yeah, I've had time to think it over. I don't believe it now. Why should she lie about it? I don't know. I, I don't know, but it, it wasn't a hangover. She was sick. She looked like the ragged end of nowhere. Yeah, well, it still sounds like a hangover to me. Well, I'm... I'm going to pay a call. Now, wait a minute. Don't worry. I won't mess anything up. Just a social call. I'm a friend of the family. Well, call me when you get back. I'll do that. <laughs> for a man about to be leaving for Paris, I... want to I'd... talk to you later about that. I'd like to see that transfer held up for a while. I'm very sorry, Mr. Devlin. Mr. Sebastian asked me not to disturb him. Company? He's in the study with some business associates, sir. How long will he be tied up? I do not know. Mrs. Sebastian at home? Yes, sir, but... She is very ill. Oh. Oh, uh, how long has she been ill? A week, sir. Has she had a doctor? I believe so, sir. I really do not know. We are very concerned about her. If you will wait here, Mr. Devlin, I will tell Mr. Sebastian. Let's go on, Professor. This sounds serious to me. Yes. What happened Monday? The same thing, Eric. When I left the bank, a man was following me. And, and, and this morning, when I, I went to the ticket office, he was there again. Yes? I'm very sorry, sir. But Mr. Devlin is calling. Oh, uh, tell him I'll be with him in a minute. Yes, sir. Now, the ticket office. What man, Professor? What did he look like? Well, obviously not a Brazilian. It's hard to describe Alex, him. I... Mr. Devlin, he's waiting. Well, I, uh, let him wait, Eric. This is terrible news, Professor. This is terrible. I'm supposed to be downstairs waiting for your husband. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you came. I couldn't stand it anymore, waiting and wondering. Alicia, what is it? I'm sick. They're poisoning me. I couldn't get away, Dad. I tried when I was too weak. How long? Ever since the party. Alex and his mother, they found out. Come on. Try to sit up. Yes. Here. Let me help you. I've got to get you out of here. I thought you'd left Rio. Oh, I, I had to see you once more and speak my piece. I was... I was getting out because I love you. I couldn't bear seeing you and him together. You love me? Uh, but why didn't you tell me before? Oh, I, I just couldn't oh. see straight. Think straight. You love me? Long ago, all the time since the beginning. Here. Here, darling, your robe. I can't tell I'm afraid they gave me pills to sleep. Yeah, you've got to keep awake. Keep talking. Keep talking. Okay, my coat, put it over your robe. Alex, Alex and his mother, they, they don't want the others to know about me. They... Uh, don't stop talking. What happened? Alex found out. Not the others? No. No, they'd kill Alex if they knew. Mattis would kill him. He killed Emil Hoop. Yeah, put your arm around me. Yes. You've got to stand up. Oh, damn. Say it again, it helps. I love you, I love you. Alicia, please, stand up. Come on, talk, talk. Professor Anderson. Yes. Sand comes from Imoris, Mom. We'll find it. A town called Santa, Santa Massa. Good, good. We'll take care of that later. Now you're on your feet, Alicia. Yes. Move them. Mm. Move them, walk, start walking. They're all down there in the stuff. We can't make They've it. You've made the doorway, the stairs aren't far. I've got hold of you, darling. Yes. But you've got to walk yourself if you don't keep moving. Oh, you... don't ever leave me. Mm -hmm. You'll never get rid of me again. I never tried to, Dad. Brace up. Yes. Here he comes. Oh. What are you doing, Alicia? What is this, Mr. Devlin? I'm taking her to the hospital to get the poison out of her. Poison? How would you like your friends down there to know? I'm taking Alicia back to her room. No, Devlin, no. I've got a gun, Sebastian. No. It'll raise quite a rumpus if you try. Alex, be quiet, Mother. Alex, he knows. Yes. What is happening, Alex? Alicia. She yes. Stay right where you are, Sebastian. Yeah, go on. Go. We're going there. We're going downstairs. Mm. You haven't forgotten what they did to Emil Hoopker, have you, Sebastian? Hope you, Alex. Yeah, I'm glad you have a head on you, madame. I'm not afraid to die. You've got your chance to die right here and now. Just call your friends to come out in the hall and tell them who Alicia really is. Do you need any help, buddy? No, we can handle her. Now where are you taking her? You answer that one, Sebastian. To the hospital. Alex, 
Top for them. I'm glad she's going, Alex. You should have waited not this long. Well, what do I do, Sebastian? Start shooting? Oh. Hold on, darling. Hold on. Only 20 yards to go out yes. the front door and then into my car. Alex, what are you doing? Who's that one? Matisse, Eric, Matisse. Alex! Uh, uh, we're, we're taking Alicia to the hospital, Eric. She had another attack. Uh, Mr. Devlin heard her scream as he was waiting for me. Now, uh, uh, come, Alicia, come, yeah. come. I phoned the hospital as soon as I saw how she was, Mr. Matisse. Why didn't you send for an ambulance? Here, Alex, your coat. Oh. You are not going with them, madame? No, Alex will call me. I'll wait here. Oh, the poor child. Yeah, I'll open the door. Good more steps, Alicia. Yeah. How do you feel? Oh, the air is... Take some, take some deep breaths. Uh, I'll open the car door. Oh, you made it. Made it, Alicia. Sit down, darling. Yes. Easy. Yes. Easy now. Hurry, please. Hurry. They're in the doorway. They're watching me. Close the door, Sebastian. Just a minute. I must go with you. No room, Sebastian. You must take me. I can't go back to That's them. That's your headache. Please, please. Please. Alex. Come here. Alicia. Alicia. I have just been up to her room. There is no telephone in her room, Alex. How could he have called the hospital? Alex, will you come in, please? We wish to talk to you. Before our stars return for their curtain calls, Libby Collins and I have some really big news for the ladies. A brand new, easy-to-enter contest. Tell about the wonderful prizes first, John. They're just about the most sensational prizes you ever heard of. $100,000 in gorgeous furs and cash. Imagine, first prize every week for five weeks is a $3,000 mink coat. And if there's a girl in this country who wouldn't like a mink coat, I haven't heard of her. And there are other superb prizes, too. Three fur coats worth $1,000 each. Five fur jackets worth $500 apiece. Twenty fur scarves, each valued at $200, 50 scarves worth $100 apiece. And that's not all. There are 250 additional prizes every week, each one a crisp $10 bill. And here's a really unusual feature. We don't select the fur for you. No, ma'am, you choose it yourself. The kind of fur, the style you want, at any furrier you want. Or you can take your prize in cash if you prefer. There's a contest every single week for five weeks. So if you don't win the first time, try again. This is just about the easiest contest to enter you ever heard of. Here's all you do. On entry blank, available at your dealer or on any piece of paper, write 25 words or less telling why you like any one of six famous lever products. Lux Flakes, Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Rinso, Swan, or Spry. Yes, any one of these products, and you can send in as many entries as you wish every week. Just be sure to include with each entry a wrapper or box top from any one of these six lever products. Print your name and address on your letter, together with the name and address of the dealer from whom you buy your lever products. Mail your entry to Lever, L-E-V-E-R, Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. The first contest closes in just about two weeks, February 8th. So get your entry in tonight or tomorrow, sure. Entries received after this date will be entered in the next week's contest. Winners of the big prizes will be announced on this program. Incidentally, you have to live in the continental United States, Alaska, or Hawaii to enter. The contests are subject to all federal, state, and local regulations and to the complete rules printed on entry blanks you can get from your dealer. Now, I'll repeat. Just write 25 words about why you like any lever product. Lux Lakes. Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Rinso, Swan, or Spry. Be sincere. Give us your own experience. Print your name and address on your letter. Print your dealer's name and address, too, because if he helps you to win, he, too, will get a prize. Enclose a wrapper or box top from one of these six products. Address your letter to Lever, L-E-V-E-R, Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8. New York. I'll repeat that. Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. There are five weekly contests. You can enter as often as you wish. So get busy, and a beautiful fur coat may soon be yours. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. It's time for that tradition of the theater, a curtain call for our stars. 
And here they are at the footlights, Ingrid Bergman and Joseph Cotton. We enjoyed you both immensely in tonight's play. And incidentally, Ingrid, one could say that word notorious applies to the kind of character you play in your next Enterprise production. I guess you could say that of Joan Madubil, whom I play with Charles Boyer in Archer Crown. Very different kind of Joan, then, from the one you're currently so famous for. Well, nothing alike but the names, Joan. I understand, Ingrid, you've become quite a winter sports enthusiast these days. Well, my husband and I just returned from four weeks of skiing, Bill. Well, there's nothing like skiing. Well, the way I do it, there's nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were a skiing enthusiast, Joe. Oh, yes. Down south, where I come from, I used to get quite a kick out of it. Oh, no. They, they have snowed on down south. Not much, but they have those newsreel theaters where you can sit with, where you watch the experts whizzing down frozen mountainsides while you sit comfortable and warm. That's really getting pleasure out of skiing. <laughs> now, while Joe does his armchair exercise next Monday night, Bill, what will you be presenting in this theater? Next week from 20th Century Fox, a rollicking romance of the theater. The backstage adventure of a lovable, laughable couple in their climb to success. It's that musical screen hit, Mother Wore Tights. Starring Betty Grable and Dan Daly. And in this warm, nostalgic story... Betty and Dan present those popular songs that made the original screenplay such a smash success. Yes. Mother Wore Tights was a great hit, Bill. And it ought to make a great hit with your audience next Monday, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks for my point. <laughs> Most of us are happy insofar as we look forward to the future, to security and continuing to have those simple luxuries and pleasures we deserve through work and careful, conscientious saving. And there is no form of saving that is at once so easy and so safe and at the same time so helpful to your economic welfare as United States savings bonds. They offer you a cash reserve plus profit. For United States savings bonds, return $4 for every three that you invest. Buy them where you work through the payroll savings plan or if you're self-employed, through the bond a month plan at your bank. Make United States savings bonds the basis for your future happiness. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Betty Grable and Dan Daly in Mother War Tights. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Joseph Cotton appeared by arrangement with David O. Selznick, producer of Alfred Hitchcock's The Paradine Case. Heard in our cast tonight were Joseph Kearns as Alex Sebastian, Gerald Moore as Prescott, and Janet Scott as Madden Sebastian. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Mother Wore Tights, starring Betty Grable and Dan Daly. Pepsodent won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families throughout America compared new Pepsodin toothpaste with the brands they'd been using at home. By an overwhelming average of three to one, they preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodin toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Mother Wore Tights, starring Betty Grable and Dan Daly. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.